How's it going, people? Welcome to A. No, I'm playing. <laughs> I have to do it. I have to do it. When he's not here, I have to do it. Um, You're well, actually the worst. <laughs> welcome to full time, everyone. I had nothing to do with that turn. Yeah, it's I a, swear. He's going to come in and grill me because of that. <laughs> he's going to kill you. It, it, it is. Yeah, how it is. nice he was to you when you were away. Oh, I, well, I didn't. I don't know. Did, was he really nice? Well, he dropped a joke, but he asked to have it cut out because <laughs> he didn't want to upset you. Well, that's staying in. <laughs> Right, well, we're going to be taking over full time today. My, me, Cecil G, and James B, and we were looking back at the Newcastle game. A win, James. Yeah, oh my God, a win. A yeah. win. I forgot the feeling. When it mattered most. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I'm happy. Of course, I'm happy with one. Of mm. course, I'm happy with some individual performances and, and some of the football we saw. It was very dominant. I think part of it was Newcastle being awful. Yeah, yeah. Um, but mm. we did our job. 100% is one of the fastest goals we've scored for a long while, for the fifth minute. Um, getting yeah. a goal, so especially from Mohamed El Messi coming up, you know. Do you think that played a part? The fact that we scored so early, we, we started were fast. able to just, that's it, we're a goal up, let's play our football now. Yeah, yeah, I think that relieved a lot of the pressure. I think the players on the pitch are deemed not to be our strongest, our strong team, our strong 11, but they got the goal straight away and it just allowed the players just have a breather and play the, play they wanted to, play the way they wanted to play and it was evident in the, in the performance. I mean, a comfortable 2-0 win, mm. can't ask for more. So yeah, no. do you want to, do you want to I mean, I could ask for it to actually mean something in the context of the season, but other than that, you can't ask for more. Could mean something for Thursday, maybe. It could mean something for Thursday. Sorry, I don't mean to be miserable, guys. I just, I, right. I am at that stage where... Turkish is here in presence. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually Turkish wearing James's face. Um, I'm just at that stage where I'm, I'm happy, of course, I'm happy we won. Mm. I just like, there's so much emphasis on Thursday and what's coming up. And the, the league games before this have been so poor. And it, what, it, we're up to ninth, mm. just struggling to like get too excited about it. Arsenal have done this where you think, oh, wow, maybe it's clicked. And then you realise it hasn't. So let's just, get, let's just get through Thursday. Let's pick up what wins we can in the league. Mm. End in the most respectable position we can and, and go from there. But yeah. Definitely. Well, looking, looking ahead for Thursday, like you just said there, mm. after the performance of today and the players that, that started, mm. I, look, I spoke to some fans last night, I know Robbie did as well, and we spoke about who could be in contention for Thursday's game off the back of this game against Newcastle. So take a look and hear what they had to say. Who out of today would you say has earned their place, apart from the, you know, the usual suspects, who out of that group would you say they've earned a spot in that team for Thursday? Well, it's going to be a difficult one now. I thought, I'm, <clears> going to, <throat> I'm going to say this now. I thought Bellerin done OK. Now, mm. if there's a problem with holding... And obviously now with David Luiz going out, it means that Chambers can go in there and, and Bellerin could go on to the, to the right back position. I thought we'd done okay today. Um, obviously Martinelli, but he's not going to get in. Um, he has to play. I, well, I, 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 listen, how I would... I, I, I know it's, whether you like it or whether you're not. For me, I'd put Martinelli on the left, Pepe on the right, Aubameyang down the middle, and I'd play Saka at left back and get Saka in the midfield. That's what I would do. I mean, who would you... Start, James, because after this game from, from so from, what have I learned from today? Yeah, that, uh, yeah, that's a funny one. Do you know if Leno hadn't made those great saves against um, uh, against Villarreal in the first leg, mm. I would be saying that Matt Ryan's actually done really well when he's come in. I mean, he got the pre-assist against Fulham True. with that flick on. Um, I like his handling. He was claiming things today. He was going into the box and he was dealing with it. Mm. Um, I've I've been impressed. He looks a really solid. Backup sounds harsh, but that's kind of the reality of what he is. Yeah. He's a backup to Leno. Um, but, I, you know, I want him to keep getting these minutes in the league. I, I think it's good for him. Otherwise, you'd have said um, Louise and Gabriel, 100%, should be starting. Obviously, Louise has picked up the injury, which is a real shame. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Artanelli and Aubameyang as well. They, they, I thought they did well today. Who, who do you start up front? So, we've got Martin, we've got Aubameyang, we've got Willian. Do you replace, would you put Pepe back in there? Does Saka go back in there? On Thursday, I know it's a tough question, but um, ask it. I think, guys, mad that we're doing full time, but all we can talk about is the next game, right? right? Um, I think in an ideal world, Saka comes in at left back, Jacka goes back into midfield, and you have Pepe, Abamyang, and Martinelli as your front three. Yeah. I think that. So we're going to talk about Martinelli's role in this match a little bit more. I wanted to ask you though, what did you make of the eleven when it came out? Were you surprised? They had so many changes. Um, did Art- I mean, I know, again, didn't mean too much, but did Arteta get it right, you think? Obviously, we won, but in terms of his management of the squad? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be completely honest with you. My opinion was... 
is what it is. It really is what it is. I didn't really have an opinion on the 11. And I didn't know what that? he was going to do. Huh? And what is that? Yeah. The, <laughs> <laughs> it is what it, it is. It is what it is because <laughs> at the end of the day, like I had a, we had a, we do the build up and we give the ideas what we think should happen and whatnot. Yeah. And then he just does something crazy like play no striker in a Villarreal game. So today I was like, whatever he does, he does. Right. So you were just like, I'm just going to go with the flow. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. I, I, I hear that. I hear that. Um, interesting to see Bellerin start, who I thought had a good game. Mm. Um, the only thing for being really overly critical is did Louise need to play this game knowing he'd just come off the back of an injury? You know, he, he's our best centre. Well, for me, he's been our most consistent centre back mm -hmm. this year. I agree. I'd have liked him for Thursday. Did we need to risk him? I don't know. But, uh, but I'm nitpicking. Look, he, he put the 11 out there, Sabah's got another chance, um, and, and, and they did the job. Would you say it'd be fair to say that Xhaka had a good game? Oh, oh no, he got booked in the first half and say Max Man. Did a, he got flicked over his head, got a yellow card after that. But after that, he was, everyone else was, um, St. Maximum was quiet. I, I think the, it looked like St. Maximum was going to cause him problems all day. Mm. And then Jacko got the yellow and just dealt with it. I think that was down to Newcastle not really getting close to Arsenal at that point. Mm. So they couldn't get St. Maximum on the ball. But yeah, he managed his time on the pitch with a yellow card pretty well, to be fair. Um, and yeah, he did fine. Like, look, we know Jacko can do a job in that position when we've got the ball. That's yeah. exactly what he does, that inverted fullback role. He's going to come inside and be a part of our progression uh, build-up play. Martinelli was really wide. We're going to talk about that in a bit. Mm. Um, so I'm not surprised Jack was untroubled today. But again, in the two tests, Chuck Wazy and Richarlison came up short. So it's going to be interesting to see what he goes with for... Um, well, for Thursday night. It will be. But should we look at that first goal? Let's take a look at it. Let's have a little look. Uh, here it is. So, comes very quickly, as you said. Fair mm -hmm. play to the team. Uh, they've made a good start. I wanted to, before I go into sort of the, the deeper analysis of it, I wanted to look at the positions of the players first. We'll highlight them in yellow. So, obviously, Louise has come quite far wide with the ball. You've got Odegaard who's dropping in. You've got Willian who's dropping in. And if you look at, well, actually, let's p pick out Elneny, because mm. I want to talk about, obviously, he's the goal, so we'll talk about him in a sec and Danny Ceballos. But if we just talk about the midfield for a sec, we'll do it in red. They're very, they're very wide. Mm. You know, Odegaard's come short, Ceballos is holding that width and he was doing it all game. It was quite interesting to see because he did that in the Sheffield United game a lot. He was really hovering out to the left, trying to support. Again, Martinelli was playing on the left in that game. Mm -hmm. So there's clearly an emphasis on the midfield being really wide and supporting down the flanks. Louise has got the ball. Williams dropped in. But the other thing I wanted to mention about this, which really made me happy, um, and as I said, I've been on his case a little bit this season, but it was Hector Bellerin. Because what he did was he, he made a run for this goal, and he's making runs all game that we hadn't seen Callum Chambers do in the last mm. couple of weeks. Chambers has done fine. I think in the West Ham game, he was overlapping and doing very well. But in this game, we were seeing the width from Martinelli, who, as you can see out on the left, is really hugging the touchline. And that was clearly an instruction because he had the better of Murphy all day. And you've got Hector Bellerin, who was providing that width, getting beyond. So fair play to the team. Well, the, the, the team for their setup, but also they're carrying out their roles. They're clearly yeah. doing what the managers are asking them. And I don't think they've ever had a problem in sort of, what's the word? They're following what Arteta asks of them. I don't think they're like revolting on that. I don't no. think they're ignoring the manager. I think they played with a lot more freedom yesterday, James. Do you remember there was a time where Gabriel just ran from centre back through the defence, the midfield, yeah, and then he was maybe, popping off. They maybe, and he yeah. stayed high as well. They were staying <laughs> high. They, a lot of the defenders were getting forward. And just, to me, it just felt like they, I don't know, they were just playing. I think that might have been relief from the first goal, but playing with a lot more freedom. Maybe they were encouraged to get to, to express themselves a little bit more. Mm. Absolutely. Um, and actually, maybe that's evident here with this goal. El Neni, the deepest player, mm. ends up the one in the box getting the goal, and fair play to him. Luis has the ball, he knocks it down the line. It's a lovely ball to Bellerin, and I think, I'm just going to pause it there for a sec. That is what we're going to miss with Luis out. He plays that ball better than anyone in the team, even for the left side. Agreed. Even, even on that left side, he does it better than anyone. We scored goals last season with Aubameyang. It was Luis who was finding it. Mm. Obviously, everyone's making the run into the box. It's interesting that Elneny runs beyond Willian and Odegaard to get into the box. El I'm Messi! Not I'm not criticising them. <laughs> I just wonder whether it was instruction or whatever. He clearly was very eager to get into the box. Mm. He goes for the cutback. It deflects off Aubameyang. 
and there's El Nenny to put it into the back of the net. Dubravka gets a touch. But credit to him. Credit to Luis for the ball. Bellerin for the run to pick Aubameyang out as well. Wasn't a great cross, but he picked someone out. Aubameyang a little bit unfortunate. Sort of, you know, scuffs the kick. And there's El Nenny to put it mm. away. And um, I'm really happy for him. You know, I, I, I want, I will El Nenny to do well. I want him to do well. It doesn't mean I think he's the answer to our midfield. Do you want to see more of him going forward? Do you want to see him potentially further or for the rest of the league games? Um... No, if I'm honest. Okay. Um, no, I think we've got better solutions to our midfield problems. Mm-hmm. But um, when he comes in, he grabs a goal. And he was steady there, but he made a good start to the game. Because before that, there was a moment where he won the ball. It kind of ricocheted to another Newcastle player. He put his body in, a good mm-hmm. sliding tackle, won the ball again. And I remember mentally thinking, God, well, he's made a good start to this game. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you were there. Yeah, you were, I remember. I said, yeah. He's all right. he's, he looks up for this. So, really happy for him. Yeah, I am as well. I hope to see actually see more of him. I wouldn't be disappointed if I see partnership of Partey and Elneny, but we'll have to see, we'll have yeah. to see going forward. Yeah. Right, do you want to take a look at the second goal? Second goal. Gabriel Martinelli plays a massive Ooh. part in this. Um, we'll talk about Aubameyang in a sec, but yeah. I want to talk about Martinelli because I thought he was the man of the match for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll debate that a little bit as well, who else was in contention, but obviously he's got his assist. It's a really good assist. Mm. Like, as I said, he was beating his fullback time and time again, goes around the outside, it's a lovely ball into Aubameyang. Mm. Four key passes, he attempted seven take-ons. And I was watching the game going, oh, when was the last time I had a winger who I felt was always beating his man? Yeah. And it wasn't just pace, because Martinelli's fast, but he's not blistering, he's not got blistering mm. pace, right? It's more that he was so skillful, he dropped the shoulder, he knew when to carry it. He was very intelligent with it. He was also involved in 14 duels more than any other player on the pitch. He's Blimey. tenacious, and that's Blimey. what he does. That's what you get from Martinelli. Mm. But by, you know, by country the most as well, he was really, from the left, a weird one, but involved in more duels than any other player. 28 passes in the opposition half and 89% pass completion. Yeah, the Martinelli case is very confusing why he doesn't get more game time and more starts. I think, I think he, it's a balance thing. Seriously, is that what you believe it is? Yeah, because I, yeah. I, he gave Murphy a headache yesterday. He was just, like you said, beating him every time on the one-on-ones. And I believe he's the trigger um, for the press, but that's something I expect. Every time he comes on, he... he, he he looks like he wants it. The passion that the fans will ask to talk about, like, we want to see the fight and the desire. He brings it every time he steps on yeah, the pitch. So I think so. I, I agree. agree. He had a great game yesterday. Yeah, and a word on Aubameyang because mm. I'm, I'm really happy for him. Like, what? He, look, have the performances been up to his level this season? No. No. But he's had so much to deal with. Even little things like the whole fiasco at the airport. You know, remember on international yeah, duty. Yeah. But obviously, what happened with his family? Malaria. Yeah, he's had a rough. He's had a, he's had it's a been, rough it's been season. Tough and he's had mm. a lot. He's had a lot of criticism for it, and the goals haven't been there at least. And Every time we lose, people say, oh, where's Aubameyang? Why isn't he speaking and all this? And I'm just glad that it wasn't just a, it wasn't just a tap in. He's got a really good goal, mm. a really good finish. Um, you, you know, as I said, we all say you've been a striker. You mm. know, what does that do for you going into a game like Villarreal? Yeah, he's, he's going to be really up for it. I mean, you could tell by the way he celebrated. He was emphatic mm. up with his goal and it, it was a good goal. And don't forget, as much as I did banter about it yesterday on the show, on the downstairs review, um, he got an assist as well. It was a bit of a miss shot that led to. Oh to yeah, he, gets an assist he got an assist for it, as well, yeah. but it went that was an assist. So big up Bamyang. He's got a golden assist from yesterday's game. Should be flying with confidence and um, for, hopefully for Thursday. There's one thing he did say in his um, post press match conference about the last five minutes. He was very tight. Was knackered basically. Mm. He was shattered. He said, and I think that's due to the, the after effects of the of the malaria. So I do worry for Thursday that he might be able to play a full ninety. But as long as he gives us, you know, a good sixty, yeah. good 60, 70 minutes, gets and continues his scoring form, I'll be happy. I really hope so. And actually, um, it went a little under the radar. I thought his build up was good today. He was mm. dropping into midfield. He was knocking it well. And actually, with that goal, um, his goal, this our second one. The one that really killed the game off. It was just the way he came into midfield, but it was a lovely turn. He mm. twists, he showed a bit of skill. He ends up losing it, but he's getting, he's looking dangerous in those areas. Eventually falls to Odegaard, who plays in Martinelli. So he was a part of that, and that was good as well. So, yeah, super, super happy for him. Obviously, that's El Nenny's goal. Should we do our man of the match? Do the man of the match. And so it's he... the same man himself. Martinelli. Anyone else it could have been? Aubameyang's up there. Really? Yeah, for me, man, he got the goal, goal and assist, and he played really well. I was, I was happy, and it was nice to see him back. And I think he's, he should have been in contention. But you're, I think you're right with the Gabriel Martinelli. I think he had a, he had a great game yesterday, and hopefully we see him on Thursday yeah. with the performance. A word for El Nenny. Gabriel, like I thought, I thought everyone kind of did well. Mm. Everyone did well, but I thought Martinelli looked quite special actually in the game yesterday. I thought he, he just looked like he. 
he was a little bit more up for it, you mm. know, he wanted it a little bit more. Mm. The stats show it, but also, I just, you, you could see that he had that kind of intensity about his game that he takes into every game, whether it's a cup semi-final or, or a meaningless Premier League game. Mm. So um, I'm super happy for him. Let's but just hope he's fit actually for Thursday. We forgot, obviously, he got tackled in that last little minute. Outrageous Out tackle. D disgusting tackle. It was not needed at all. Do you know what Preserved it is as well? Uh, it's not that it was two-footed and on the knee or, or disgusting in the traditional kind of like, you know, it was just a dangerous, dangerous tackle. It was. It was more that it was like the 91st second minute of the game. Mm. Um, the game's lost. Like, let's, I know they're always going to fight for it. I get that. But the game's pretty much lost. And he was nowhere near the ball. It was just so... What's the word? Um, uh, the word mismanaged is in my head, but that's not what I mean. It was just... It was it was bad decision making. Yeah. He didn't. Yeah. It was bad reading. It was the situation. rash. It was, it was rash. rash. Yeah. It was, yeah. It wasn't. It was not needed at all. It was a terrible, yeah. terrible tackle. And, and like, luckily, he got to carry on the rest against. So I think he'll probably be alright. Hopefully so. And I just want to mm. give a quick word to David Luiz as well because mm. we didn't got to mention him. Yeah, I think he had a great game. It was nice to see him back, and he provides a lot of the forward passes from defence that we've lacked while he's been away. So big up David Luiz as well. Shame we lost him through injury though. Oh, yeah. yeah, another one. Mm. But listen, guys, thank you for watching full time. Let us know who your man the match is in the comments below and we'll see you again very soon.